Hi, this is Sean, and today's lesson is on relative clauses and pronouns. What are they? Well, they're actually a way of joining rather simple sentences together into more complex units. I think they're powerful little words, and they join together things that are short and otherwise disjointed. What are they? Which ones are they? Well, it's who, which, whom, whose, that, as well as adverbs like when, where, and why. And you'll notice something very peculiar. Many of these are actually question words. But despite being question words, they're used in a declarative way. And there is no inversion, nor is there any auxiliary do. OK, let's see some examples. Basically, we're going to see that there are two kinds of relative clauses. There are defining relative clauses, and this is a clause which has relevant and very pertinent information, and there are also non-defining relative clauses. This is generally considered to be extra information which can be omitted. Let's look at the defining relative clauses. Relative clauses that are defining Identify the person, the thing, the time, the place, or the reason. So we can have something like, Chris is the man who I met on the train. And I would really read that all together it's like this. Chris is the man who I met on the train. That's the park where we used to play football. Or, it was the time when I really wanted to have a good time. Or, it was the place that I really loved to be in. Okay. So those are defining. We can also keep in mind that um, in common usage, that can be used instead of who or which. Um, the person who told me asked me to keep it a secret. Or the person that told me asked me to keep it a secret. Okay, this is in common usage. Also, when there's no ambiguity and there's no chance of a misunderstanding, the relative pronoun can be left out if it is the object of the verb in the relative clause. Such as, the book you lent me is really good. So you lent me what? You lent me the book. The book is really good. You lent me the book. The book you lent me is really good. Because these are defining, also keep in mind the following. No commas are used before or after the relative clause. The commas, you may notice in the next examples, cause you to drop your voice to pause, and therefore it's already signaling that it's not relevant or very pertinent information, but rather some sort of extra information. So let's look at the non-defining relative clauses now. As I mentioned, it's extra information which can be omitted. In this case, however, um, in the first part we said that that and who and which are interchangeable. Here we cannot use that. That, in other words, is really tied to the, to the element before it. Also, as I mentioned, commas are used before and after the relative clauses, and this actually causes your voice to drop. So we have something like this. The shop where I worked as a student, is closing down. The bank manager, whose wife is a teacher in my school, is very helpful. So basically, um, the sentence would be fine if we said, the shop is closing down, or the bank manager is very helpful. We already know which shop, and we already know which uh, bank manager. So we're very specific on this. Now, sometimes you have to make a judgment call. Um, and this really boils down to one thing. Have you talked about the person or not? So, the first example, the doctor who treated me when I had the flu is retiring. Oh, excuse me, that's the second one. The doctor who treated me when I had the flu is retiring. There, obviously, we've talked about the doctor. Um, it shows that it's information that is extra, and we know which doctor. And the second one, however, which I'll read in a second, we really haven't established which doctor it is, so we need to really specify. 
The doctor who treated me when I had the flu is retiring. The other doctors are not retiring. Or we really need to show which one in particular is retiring. Okay? All right. Well, those are the two basic kinds of relative clauses, or the two only kinds, rel defining and non-defining relative clauses. Now, what do we do with prepositions? Well, this is quite interesting because in uh, languages like Portuguese or Spanish or, or many others, um, prepositions should not really be at the end of a clause or um, a sort of unit, a unit in the, in the, in the sentence. In English, we love it. And, in fact, it's very hard to put a preposition at the very beginning of a clause. So, um, because it's difficult, or shall we say not very usual, it sounds very formal. So the first sentence is quite formal. The doctor to whom I, I spoke told me the vacuum cleaner... Did I just say the doctor? No. The person to whom I spoke told me the vacuum cleaner would be delivered this morning. Now, not only is it rather um, elaborate to put the two in the front, because normally we say spoke to somebody, but also we have here whom. Whom is used for the indirect object in this case. And therefore it suffers a change from who to whom. Now, with this one, we don't do that because it's already less formal and it's detached from its preposition. So, um, it's like this. Mrs. Evans, who I talked to just now, sends her regards. So, with prepositions, in general, we're, we prefer to have the preposition linked to the verb and not linked to the object that it would describe. Okay, let's see two examples here. Um, and the question is, are we talking about a defining relative clause or a non-defining relative clause? So in the first example, her activist, I uh, know, her active conservationist stand against game wardens, zoo poachers, and government officials who wanted to co convert gorilla habitats to farmland caused her to fight for the gorillas not only via the media, but also by destroying poachers, dogs, and traps. It's a very long sentence, and actually one has to try to keep on. Well, which government officials is it? Well, they are very specific ones. They're ones who wanted to convert gorilla habitats to farmland. So in order to not insult them or to really narrow down which gover government officials we're talking about, um, we need to not use the commas, and we need to make it a defining relative clause. Otherwise, we would incriminate them or maybe even offend them. In the second one, her book, Gorillas in the Mist, which was published in 1983, became a bestseller. Here, we're just giving you a little extra nugget of information, a sort of matter-of-fact piece of information, which is the publishing date of the book. 1983. Okay, so if we look at number two, I will try to read those as best I can. Um, we see one that is a non-defining, the first one, and the second one which is defining. So let's read A. Her stand against government officials who wanted to cover convert gorilla habitats to farmland became her overriding aim. Here, basically, all the government officials are quite evil. In the second one, her stand against government officials who wanted to convert gorilla habitats to farmland became her overriding gain, gain, aim. Here, basically, it's only these particular officials that she's having a problem with. Now, for the next activity, and the last here, before you can um, download some other activities from your Moodle, I'm going to give you or point out elements of a sentence. You can then pause this video and try to answer it, and then I'll give you the answer. So we have here somebody named Leaky. Leaky gives a job. 
And this job is for a person, and this person should show determination. Now pause the video, and you can solve it. Leaky gave the job to a person who showed determination. I use the past tense here. The next one. Fossey's PhD, and he studied at Cambridge. She studied at Cambridge. And she did some research in Africa. Pause the video and you'll get the answer after you start it again. Fossey's PhD, which she got at Cambridge University, was based on her research in Africa. Here the fact that she went to Cambridge was just an extra piece of information. Fossey was in the forest and she lived with the gorillas in the area. And the area was near um, some mountain slopes of the Dem Democratic Republic of the Congo. Here I think the information is, in is important because um, we're going to describe the area in the mountains. Fossey, uh, pause please, and then you can get the answer. Fossey lived with gorillas in an area that was near the mountain slopes of the Demo Democratic Republic of Congo. Notice we have here the that, and we're describing that it was near the mountain slopes. Very last one, and then you're done. Fossey lived for several years, or spent several years in Africa. While she was in Africa, she met her untimely death. Please pause. Fossey, who spent several years in Africa, met her untimely death there. We know who we're talking about. We know who Fossey is by now, the scientist. So, this is just a little overview of defining and non-defining clauses. I hope that it's helpful, and um, please download the remaining activities from Moodle if you'd like to do a little extra. Otherwise, complete the ones that are in your textbook. Thanks. Hope you like it.